that Scion Fund, and powered parachutes have been out for a number of years now, and so there's a lot of used stuff coming out into the market, and if it's anything like the conventional ultra, there's things that you should be looking for. Uh, we've got a powered parachute here, uh, courtesy of, uh, who's this courtesy of? Harmonies High Flyers. Harmonies High Flyers, and we would, if, if you could just go over, this is a brand new unit, but if we could just go over and point out some of the things that somebody in the industry just getting into this or just looking at a shoot okay. to look at. To be honest with you, this is not a brand new unit. This, this unit here has 51 hours on it. It's uh, probably about a year old. One of the things that I first do um, looking at a used unit is I stand back and do a visual of it. I stand back and look at the prop guard ring, look for symmetrical stuff. I stand back and look for bends and tubing. I just do a, a visual of the, the whole unit to make sure it's never been rolled over, if it has, if it's had a prop strike, things like that. Then I go around and I find detail everything. I check all the hardware. I make sure that... Um, the owner, if he's replaced any hardware, he's used all aircraft hardware. Um, I, I physically check all the tubes for cracks, stress cracks, things like that. I do a real nice look. I check the fiberglass or plastic, whatever's on the unit for the fuel tank, check for cracks. So I do, just do a general once around the whole unit, but looking at it very closely, looking for bolts that have been replaced, um, brackets that have been replaced. Then when it, get, when it comes up to the cabling system, I'm very picky when I look at this. I make sure we have the AN45 eye bolts. This is standard in the industry. I don't want no hardware store. This is my lifeline here. I check the cables. I check the swags. I check for wear on the cables or possibly a prop strike. And then I follow that back to the parachute. So I'm very concerned with this, the hardware in here, that it hasn't been replaced. I'm looking for the same types of cables. A lot of guys, if they damage a cable, they'll go to a hardware store and replace it with their own cable. And I don't trust a lot of people's swag. And this, this right here is very important. But essentially, that's, that's what I look for, cracks in the finish. If you see that there's cracks in the powder coating or a, a part that has been taken off and possibly painted by the owner. So I check kind of that stuff, the aesthetics of the unit. Now, if you look at this unit here with 51 hours, it's a very clean unit. Um, this right here would pass my inspection as something that I would personally buy. I check lines then as I go back. I check lines into the parachute. I follow those back prior to doing my parachute inspection. Then that brings me into the engine. When I check the engine, I'm looking for leaks, I'm checking the sockets, the boots, I pull a plug out, check a plug, check the plug wires, just generally looking for any type of fluids that possibly have leaked, looking for any dents possibly on the engine cover to see if the unit's been rolled or dents in the gearbox. Um, then, of course, you definitely run the engine and you check your temps on it, hear the engine run, see how hard it starts. Uh, if you have a two-cycle mechanic that's handy you know grab somebody else if you're not very familiar with engine because the power plant is very important it's a very expensive part of the system the two most expensive parts on this thing are the engine and the parachute the airframe uh, is pretty much you know stuff guys can do themselves so I'm very particular with the engine I check the temps on it and I I always look for a unit that's had gauges on it um, I'm not apprehensive of a unit that doesn't have gauges but if you're flying without gauges you don't know the whole history of the engine this thing's got 51 hours on it and if it didn't have gauges on it, we don't know what this engine's been through. So I'm very particular about the engine, checking that out, making sure it runs good, isn't hard to start. Then I get back into my parachute. And when I get back into the parachute, I do a very careful inspection of the parachute itself. Um, and I'm not going to totally pull this one out of the bag, but I'll tell you a story. I, I bought a used unit, and I got stuck one time. We inspected the parachute, and we were in a big hurry. And the parachute looked fine to my wife and I. We both checked out the parachute. And needless to say, when we got it back to Illinois and I popped the chute up in the air, I looked over on my stabilizer on the right side and there was a small hole that we had missed. And the guy didn't tell me about it. So we, needless to say, had to send this parachute in and have it repaired. So when you check over the parachute, you check it over, have a friend of yours check it over, look for holes, tears, rips, anything like that in the parachute. Check the, you can actually do an a infield porosity check with your finger. Look for discoloration of the fabric. If it's a real fluorescent uh, colored parachute, like fluorescent orange, try to physically push your finger through the material. Do like a porosity check in the field. Um, Why would the orange uh, make a difference? The, the more fluorescent colors and the brighter colors deteriorate faster. To be honest with you, the best color for a parachute is white. Nobody wants white because they get dirty. So the darker color, the purples, the blues, things like that, when you get into the, the fluorescent oranges and a lot of the fluorescent colors, um, to hold that color, they have to do different, different techniques to it. So I'm always cautious of fluorescent colors. And another good point is, depending on the area you're buying the plane from, Arizona, a lot of UV, California, a lot of UV. Um, so be cautious of things like that. If you get a plane from the Midwest, it's going to have less UV exposure than, say, something else. 
Um, and then I physically check all the lines. I, I mean, I literally check all the lines for wear, for fraying. Uh, I check lines to make sure that somebody hasn't taken. Now, this, this is an Abco wing. It's got colored lines. A lot of the PD wings and some of the other wings have white lines on them. I check each individual line, make sure that it's either Spectra or Dacron, whatever it's supposed to be for specs, and that it isn't something that somebody cut a line and went out and got a shoestring and repaired their parachute. I want to make, you know, and I also check for patches in the parachute, any type of home repairs, any type of, and you can just look at any parachute, and you can look at the stitching that they have on the parachute, and you can tell that it was done by a professional. So I checked. Now, if I saw a stitch along here that was really erratic or something that somebody might have put on their sewing machine and done themselves, I'd be cautious of that. Because what people don't realize, with a parachute, this is your wing. And when you change one of these lines, you can take one line in this parachute and, and shorten one line by two inches and you change the shape of the wing and you've created a wing that could be dangerous to get in the air. Same with the, the parachute material by repairing the parachute if somebody does it in their house on their own sewing machine. So that's essentially what I check for. Rips, tears, I try to push through the material. You can tell if the materials, and you can see this parachute's been well cared for. Um, it's been kept in the bag when it isn't being in the air. Um, you can check the mylar inserts, but generally just do a real thorough inspection of the parachute. I mean cover it, lay it out flat upside down, check all the connection points on the lines, then flip it over, check the top of the parachute, look inside the cells to make sure there's no muffler burns, things like that. So do a real good inspection on the parachute because like I said, the parachute and the engine are your two big investments on this unit. And if you get a parachute that doesn't pass inspection, doesn't pass a porosity test, um, or has no lift, which is what will happen when it gets old, it will lose its lift. So another good thing to do when you're buying a used unit, of course, is to make sure you fly it or get a competent BFI or AFI to test fly the unit for you. Something else that you can do, and I tell people to do this religiously, if you're looking at in the used market, feel free to call me or another AFI around the country if you have questions about a particular unit, because there's, there's some older units out there with chutes on them that are very hard to inflate. Um, or they've had problems with these parachutes, so it's always good to get some professional advice. And you may have to call three or four people to find somebody to help you, but it's a very good idea because you're making a you know a pretty big, pretty sizable investment, and it's good to have somebody test fly the unit first. Like I said, the one that we bought, my wife and I, we didn't test fly the unit. We blew into this place, bought it from a guy in an apartment. It was a real rush deal, um, and we got a parachute that we had to take off and send in and pay for the repair ourselves. So you can get stuck. Um, people always aren't honest, so be very cautious when you're buying a, a used unit. Now you mentioned about sunlight in the areas like Arizona. Uh, Florida here's got a lot of moisture and, and that type of thing. Would that affect any parts of the parachute? Yeah, moisture does also. These things are UV sensitive and moisture. The moisture actually wears on the coatings, the protective coatings on them. So you always want to keep your parachute as dry as possible. And that's why they recommend, even on a new unit, um, every hundred hours you send your parachute in for an inspection. And that's every hundred hours. Now if you bought a new unit, say they had 140 hours on it, I would send it in and have it inspected before I would fly it because your wing is a key thing. And you can look at a parachute and it looks good to you, but if they do a porosity check on it or start checking the, the lines, they might find lines that are very compromised and the parachute is not actually safe. Because you don't know what you don't know the history of this parachute or what it's been through. So be very cautious of your parachute mainly. Thank you very much for your time. Okay.